anyway, um, I want to break down a bunch of things with my next guest. She's one of my dear friends. She's constantly on with us anytime we ask. She's a tremendous attorney, tremendous advocate for Donald Trump, and author of uh, Trump Must Win. Tisha Powell joins us right now. Her book, Trump Must Win, Discover the Dark Days Americans Will Face. If Trump isn't reelected in 2020, um, you kind of predicted these dark days um, a little while back when you wrote Trump Must Win, and it's happened, and I think almost worse um, than we could have imagined, Tisha. How important is this to our society that Trump wins this race, in your view? Well, it's, John, it's, it's very important. And one of the things that I want to remind people about, you know, I did our research today. A lot of people are up financially because of President Trump. So, you know, we rely upon, we in America rely upon President Trump to create jobs for us so that we could feed our family, we could feed our kids, we have food on our table, we have clothes to wear. You know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they're not into that. They're into destroying us, you know, they're into recessions, they're into socialism, they're into not working and get a paycheck somehow from the government. You know, and I don't know how the government is going to provide for us if we have no jobs. Aside from Kamala Harris and Joe Biden want to print all the money in the world and have us stay home and do nothing. I mean, you know, we've been cooped up in our house since March. This is just a sample of what socialism is going to be like, where we're going to rely upon the government to give us everything. Tell yeah, us where so, to go. So, to Tisha, go. Uh, great point. And on that point... Um, Right here in New York, you know, in New York City, there's still, st restaurants can't open, right? They can only do outdoor dining. Uh, I was at a restaurant over the weekend when it started pouring out, um, and everybody had a scatter. You know what I mean? My, my, my bolognese over there was full of water. Uh, the whole bowl of pasta had, it was like soup then. You know what I mean? It was raining. People had, you know, there was umbrellas and coverings, but it was pouring out. The water was coming sideways, right? These people can't survive much longer. Okay, and Bill de Blasio said, I don't really want to open restaurants because the people that go there, they're middle class and upper middle class, they have extra money to spend. It's not the most important thing. So this closure here, to your point, is showing everyone that this is the first leg of moving us into socialism when they can close restaurants because they don't like the type of people that go to them. But John, that's clear. You're experiencing a quality of life that de Blasio, who's a socialist, is bringing to New York City. So they're just showing you a sample of what life will be like if Joe Biden wins. I mean, people need to take this seriously. Just as you said, you couldn't have your pasta because the water came in. I mean, this is just what socialism is like. And de Blasio doesn't really care. I mean, he's destroyed New York City. I mean, he's a socialist. Everybody knows that he's a socialist. And now we're seeing what's going on in New York City. And Joe Biden is no different. I mean, he's a closet socialist running around trying to tell us that things are going to be better for us. Right. Shame on Joe Biden for running on the ticket and knowing he's a socialist. Really shame. Well, he did kind of make a bargain with, with Bernie Sanders, right? Like Bernie Sanders was supposed to win the primaries. And Barack Obama's team and the Clinton cartel, they saw that Bernie was running away with it. And they didn't want to hand over the keys to a non-Democrat. Bernie's an independent and he's a socialist. So they basically got behind Biden to squeeze Bernie out of the race. And um, I think Joe Biden had no choice but to agree to, you know, this you know, they call it a Faustian bargain um, that he would take on their platform if they didn't continue to fight against him. And, uh, you know, Bernie submitted again. But um, um, The Atlantic now has come out with some article, um, this left wing magazine. Um, and there's these quotes in there that Trump went to cemetery and said, you know, was going to go to the cemetery and said, you know, American veterans who were killed in foreign wars are losers. Uh, and suckers, and this is what the Atlantic said. Um, what, what, what happened here? I mean, the president's saying this is another hoax. I, I have a hard time believing that Donald Trump would say fallen soldiers of America are suckers and losers. I'm just surprised, John, that we have to wake up this morning to defend President Trump against the Atlantic. I'm just surprised that people would write such horrible lies about military people who 
fight, John, to save our lives. They've lost limb, they've lost their lives, and the Atlantic is lying. They're just lying on the president with military bodies. I mean, I think this, I couldn't believe when I read it. It's like the lowest of lows. And then it's, it's you know, it's like nobody's coming forward. It's all people who are saying, oh, I'm going to remain confidential. They're all liars. You know, the president said it didn't happen. John Bolton, who was there and has a reason to lie, said it didn't happen. How could the Atlantic be so irresponsible to make this kind of article and talk about the dead, John, war, war people, people who died for our freedom, John? You know, this is despicable. I can't believe how politics can go this low. This is what I cannot believe is happening. And how do the parents feel about this? How do everybody in the military feel about this? It's a lie they told on the president. And I think that the Atlantic should retract this because it's disgusting. You shouldn't be writing these stuff, especially when you have talking about military people and military bodies. It's not right. Yeah, you know, um, Tisha, I get, um, you know, as a broadcaster, um, we sometimes do investigative pieces where we look deeper into things and fact check things and stuff like that. So, you know, as a member of the media, I can almost go out and say I have an anonymous source that saw Joe Biden having intercourse with a child. Um, and unless someone's life was endangered at the time, no one could force me to say who my source is. So the Atlantic hides behind that veil of journalism and basically makes crap up and puts an anonymous source on it. We've been seeing this for, for years now with Trump. Am I, am I wrong? No, it's the truth. But what we're seeing now, John, is just a level of unethics, just unethical, and a level of just lies, and just a, a level of desperation, and just using military people. I mean, these are real people who died so that you and I could be free in America. And this is what they're doing. <laughs> throwing military people under the bus and saying that President Trump did this, and it's wrong. President Trump actually cared for military people. He went to a military school. We can't forget that, you know, and he's surrounded by generals. How could the Atlantic be so careless in their words and, and their action and just waking up to read it? It was horrible. It was just despicable. It's just like, and I'm glad John Bolton came out and said it didn't happen. And I'm glad President Trump said it didn't happen. It's a hoax, but... The Atlantic, come on, you're running away with crap here, and you're giving people all this evil things to think about. All right, I was, at a, uh, I was at a press conference this morning for a class action lawsuit that was filed by 180 restaurant owners against Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo, and uh, my good buddies, uh, Lou Gelamino and Mark Fonte, the attorneys for this group, and uh, James Mermingus, um, they're going to the judiciary branch and asking them to be a check on the executive branches in New York City and New York State. And that's what, how our system is set up here. That's how it's supposed to work, right? Um, but I, might, I was at that press conference and I didn't see Bolton's quote. So you're saying that Bolton himself came out and denied this story. Correct. And I, I, he has every reason. I mean, come on, he's got a book out. He was fired. He has every reason to say, oh, yeah, yeah, it did happen. And, and it didn't. And I'm just surprised the Atlantic wrote this story about military bodies, John. I mean, you know this is going to stir up a lot of controversy. You know people are going to be hurt by it because there are a lot of Americans who have lost their family for freedom. I mean, this is, I mean, I've got relatives in the military. I cannot believe the Atlantic would be so hurtful for families who have people in the military. It's, 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 and they need to retract it. It's just awful, awful journalism. Yeah, I, I think we're past that. You know what I mean? A retraction is a retraction, but... Low, low class. Very, very low class. I agree with you. But uh, this is what they've been doing to Trump since day one. And it's people like you whose voices need to continue to be heard. You were writing about the dark days ahead if Trump doesn't win in your book, Trump Must Win, um, a while ago. And for those of you watching at home... Uh, go check out Tisha's book, Trump Must Win, outlines the dark days ahead for all of us if uh, Trump doesn't win. Thank you, my dear. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Tisha. God bless. God bless you also. Tisha Powell, quick break, coming back with some news of the day in just a few minutes.